This is Red Green, and today's show, Harold's gonna tell you how to hurt people's feelings, Bill's going downhill skiing, and I'll show you how to make a complete wall out of studs. A poet once wrote, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? Well, here's a man from the farthest reaches of the north on his last grasp, my uncle, your host, Red Green! And uh, thank you, Harold, for that little bit of literature. Reminded me of why I hated school. <laughs> no problemo. Here's a little poetry in motion for you. It's <laughs> been kind of a good news, bad news week up here at Possum Lodge. Now, for me, it's been good news, not bad news. But for some of the others, it's been bad news, not good news. Excuse me, Uncle Red. Do you want to get on with it before it's old news? <laughs> All right, uh, first, the good news. Harold, you're laid off. Uh, why? Don't... That's not fair. And now the bad news, he's not gonna go quietly. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm sorry about you broken your radio. What? What's wrong with my radio? Nothing, why? Who said anything about your radio? What? what? Well, actually, uh, I'm not laying Harold off for, for any of his uh, incompetence here. It has to do with finances, that's all. We're a little short of money, and we're just going to make some cutbacks. That's all there is to it. Oh, OK, well, you know, if that's, if that's what it is, you know, there's a local TV show, you know, Uncle Red, and um, it's like a funniest home videos, right? And, and, and what they do is they, they show, you know, funny home videos, right? So, and if you win, first prize is $1,000. Right? <laughs> just think of all the funny things that happen right here in the lodge, day in, day out, we can, you know? Like what things? <laughs> like what? Okay, okay, all right. How about how about the time that you um that you you, you parked the van too close to the septic tank and then you stepped out and <laughs> <laughs> or you know there was the time. <laughs> Junior Singleton, right? He borrowed Uncle Red's brand new radial arm band saw, and he gets it, right? But his suspender gets caught in there, and he just blew out the motor, and it was... But that's not funny. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, really, there's so many other to choose from. Like, oh, okay. You want it? This is the one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uncle Red, Phil, on the roof. They're fixing the antenna. A storm comes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a bad example, actually. But how, how about something where someone else gets hurt, you know? Like me? <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that was a good one. You like that? <laughs> okay. All right, well, we can make money on that. Yes, we can make money on that, Uncle Red. Yeah, because I could get the Lodge video camera, you know, and I could just shoot all the funny, humorous things that happen around here. We'll win first prize. A thousand dollars will be solvent again. <laughs> and I can keep my job, you know. <laughs> well, you know, other than you keeping your job, I really like the sound of it. You know? <laughs> Probably the whole thing's gonna blow up in my face. Well, that's excellent. I could film that too. <laughs> I spied a young lady walking down the street. A pretty young thing that I chanced to meet. She wiggled her hips and batted her eyes. Can you begin to imagine my surprise? When it turned out, it came to my attention. It occurred to me she wasn't young or pretty. She was a middle-aged guy in show business. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you how to build a framing wall, which is the first step in uh, turning that dark, danky, stinky, musty swamp of a cellar of yours into a bright, uh, warm, modern, uh, friendly, spacious family room where the kids can go and do stuff they don't want you to know about. <laughs> uh, or uh, you could uh, put, say, a decorator wall in upstairs, or perhaps you and your spouse are going through one of those low points in a marriage where just a partition in the bedroom would keep you legally living together without creating out-and-out -out warfare. So uh, the first thing you're going to need to do this is a few of the two-by-fours and uh, some of the... Some of the three and a half inch males, get the sharp ones. And uh, one of these babies right here, a power hammer. What's a power hammer, you're asking? Well, a power hammer is basically a gun that uh, fires nails. You gotta love a tool that uses gunpowder, don't you? <laughs> All right, let's start by uh, cutting up the two by fours. I love the smell of fresh pine. You wanna make sure you get them all to the same length. 
And here we go. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. There we go. And kind of... And uh, there we go. Boy, that smells good, doesn't it, huh? Now, uh... Golly, maybe I should have measured those first, you know. Uh, why, did I, why did I cut those again? Uh, all right, all right, let's start again. Let's start again. Okay, let's time uh, even up the ends, because uh, you want them all to be the, exactly the same length. That's the whole point of the... Well, I, uh, um, I guess they were the same length. <laughs> oh, well, uh, we'll just build a shorter wall now. That's okay, because uh, the walls in the basement are real short anyway. <laughs> uh, Okay, now, uh, these are your, uh, are your uprights, uh, or at least they will be when they're upright. And uh, you cut these so that they're uh, exactly the same height as your ceiling, uh, minus three inches. Okay, uh, just like Harold's career, we're gonna start at the bottom. The only difference being, we're going somewhere. Okay, this here is what I call a footer. Actually, it's a three-footer. Uh, and we're gonna anchor this to the floor using uh, the power hammer. You know, actually, uh, these units use the same uh, cartridge as a 22 caliber rifle. You could, you could go hunting with one of these power hammers. You know, you could get yourself a deer and tack his hide to the tree all in the one go. <laughs> all right, that'll be enough. And you pop these in the back here. And then you just uh, put her in place, push her down, and let her go. <laughs> Did I mention uh, ear protection at all? <laughs> You really want to use ear protection with this. Ear protection's pretty well a must. <laughs> so uh, this is going to take a while. So why don't you go back to the show? I'll keep building, and we'll come back when I'm all done. Somebody want to get that phone? <laughs> it's that time once again where we expose those three little words that men have such difficulty saying. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point is my Uncle Red and his best friend in the whole wide world. Okay, Mr. Dougie Franklin! <laughs> Dear experts, I consider myself to be an above average driver. However, the judge who took my license away suggested I may not be as good as I think I am. <laughs> exactly how do you tell if you're a bad driver or not? Well, Nuggie, uh, this sounds like it'd be right dead center of your area of expertise. No kidding, Red. I mean, you want to know something about bad drivers? I am your man. I must run into one or two of those suckers head on once a month. <laughs> yeah, but listen, let's start in the very, very beginning where the problem lies. I blame it on your driver education system. I'm with you there, Doug. I agree 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, a kid spends four years in school learning how to control a pencil, which has no moving parts, goes about one mile an hour, and is not known to burst into flames when she rolls. <laughs> what I'm saying here is we're not teaching our kids right. And how can we? You know, I mean, these teachers are talking theory. You want to know how to do something? Go to somebody who's been there. Go to hell and back and tell the story, like my family. We have had every type of accident imaginable. <laughs> we have had your head on, your rear ender, your side swipe, your rollover, your rollover with a convertible, you name it. <laughs> we have done them all. We should be teaching the kids. You put me, my brother, and my daddy in front of a classroom, and I guarantee you, you will bring down the number of bad drivers on the road. Yeah, by three. <laughs> what you gotta do is uh, attach the uh, this part of the wall uh, to the footer by nailing nails up th up through from underneath. All right, if you're doing this, I would suggest that you nail this part onto the footer before you attach it to the floor. That's an excellent tip. Anyway, you get the idea. So until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. You know what I, what I could do with this is uh, just go down to the basement. 
and just keep firing nails till I hit the wall. <laughs> Sorry, Harold. We're still working on these funniest home videos, so I thought I'd go see Ranger Gord. You know, Gord, I, I was thinking uh, you're up here and you'd be able to see, uh, you know, 40 miles in every direction. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, uh, I, I guess you must see a lot of funny things happen, do you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My life is nonstop comedy and fun. Oh. <laughs> you see a lot of funny things over the course of 6,000 days. Yeah, well, you know, if we can get some of those funny things on tape, uh, we can win a prize on a television show. Really? Yeah. What show? Real people? <laughs> I don't know if that one's on anymore. This is, uh, I believe it's called a funny home video or something like you that. Know what a, you know what a great show is? Vegas. <laughs> that one. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's still on. Dan Tannen is sexy old vintage T-Bird and his, and his real sexy assistant. Uh, Beatrice. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They, well, anyway, uh, Gord, uh, what, what kind of what kind of funny thing do you see the you know the tourists doing up here? Tourists. Yeah. Tourists? No, tourists. Uh, tourists don't come this far north. Oh. <laughs> but once, once there were these two pine trees growing right out there. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the two, so the two trees are growing, yeah, yeah. and uh, one tree starts to grow a little faster than the other oh, one. Oh, for God's right? sake! Yeah. And uh, so it's taller. Yeah, but one night, there's a windstorm, and it blows the top branches off the tall oh, yeah. tree. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, the tall tree is actually shorter. <laughs> Can you imagine how the tall tree felt being shorter? <laughs> you know, Gordon, that may not play all that well on, uh, on television. <laughs> Well, uh, this idea of raising money with a funny home video was turned into kind of a good news, bad news thing. The good news is we're getting lots of suggestions from the guys. The bad news is none of them are any good. <laughs> like uh, Buster Hadfield uh, claims he gets big laughs at his family functions by putting underwear on his head. <laughs> Should give you an idea of how his family functions. <laughs> how are we doing on the technical end there, Harold? Oh, well, just let me start by saying it's totally my fault. Well, that'll save a little time. <laughs> well, this, this is one of these situations where you wish you had a video camera with you because oh, it's, it's really quite funny. Oh, um, you know, you know how the, you need a battery to make the uh, camera actually functionable. You know the battery thing, the, the battery. You know that the battery. The battery. That's the one. Yeah. The battery. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, so it's cute actually because in the in the biz, you know, in the technical show biz, you know, the parlance for such a term as a battery is a chocolate bar, right? You know that it's a chocolate bar because it looks like a chocolate bar, you know. And, <laughs> but actually, it tastes more. Like like nickel and cadmium, you know? But anyway, anyway, you know, it's funny because, you know, uh, being the cameraman, when the battery dies, you would turn to the assistant, in this case, Bill, and I would say, you know, the assistant, put in another chocolate bar, you know? <laughs> and it's so funny because I thought he was going to put in another battery, you know? Just chop it in the camera? Exactly! <laughs> Everywhere, you know? <laughs> but the funny part, is, funny part is, you can't get the nuts or the raisins out of it. <laughs> So we have no camera. At this time, no. <laughs> uh, in today's adventures with Bill, Bill is going to teach me how to do a little downhill skiing, something I've never done. And uh, I think Bill is primarily a teacher. Now, this was interesting. To, uh, in order to save time, he had actually put his skis on uh, before he came out in my van to do the skiing. Which I thought it was interesting. I guess it does take quite a while to get the skis on and what have you. But... You know, I'm not really sure that, that exactly how much time this saved in this particular case. Anyway, just let me put that. There he is. All right, all right. But, uh, you know, I mean, with a teacher, you, you teach your students, and then they have, I guess they have the choice of either doing what you say or, or picking a better way. I think I might I might go with a different way on this, but that's, but, but, but again, I'm, I'm receptive. I'm, Bill knows what he's doing here. And down we go, and then... No, oh, no, I just cut. Now there's another thing. You see, you, you show the example of what can go wrong. I think that's that's valuable. Like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. For example, there, pick me in off your ski is probably not something you you choose to do, but if he shows it to the students, that's the mark of an excellent teacher. Anyway, he's got lots more skis out in the out in the van. A lot of poles. Oh, oh. Now this is a, that was a safety lesson. You know, and it's one that I'll remember for quite quite a while. Bill said, really was good that way. Now, you got an awful lot of poles there, Bill. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. And then just, and when, oh. 
Well, I guess, I guess, I guess he knows what he's doing. Now he puts him down like Jean-Claude Keeley. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. No tipping. <laughs> anyway, now this is, he's showing me how to get the, 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 the shoes have the holes in them with those little pins. The pins line up with the holes in the special cross-country ski things, and then he clips that down. Now, down there again, he's showing us what can go wrong. I didn't, actually, I wasn't paying that much attention at this point. I was just kind of using logic and common sense. Oh, oh, oh. But I was getting mine on, all right? I guess maybe, that, you know, that is an effective way to teach. He shows you the wrong way, and then you kind of, you know, you feel good about it. And I was, uh, yeah, you're doing fine. And I was feeling real, real good, and I thought, this might be an interesting way to meet Swedish women, too, you know? <laughs> and he's moving along there. I'm not quite sure what this was about. I guess he was just kind of marking his path or what have you. But this, I guess this would explain why all the poles were there, because I said I was looking more for the Swedes. <laughs> anyway, steep hills, boy, there's a challenge. That's a tough one. He was using the poles to come inside them. Now, again, I think as a teacher, he was showing us all that uh, things can go wrong. And I thought he was going to slide all the way back to the beginning of the course, but no, he got lucky there. He's so smart. And then I'm going along, and all of a sudden I hear, uh, hear a noise. I'm thinking, what's the teacher showing us? Well, for gosh sakes, uh, uh, the teacher's got a sense of humor, but Bill, the, the van, the van, the Bill, the van. Oh, oh. Well, I, I learned a great deal there, and, and, and thank you, Bill. And actually, it's a, it's a great sport. I'm, I'm having a good time. And uh, I actually missed him there, so I'm getting better than, than, than I used to be. As far as the teacher's concerned, uh, looks to me like it's uh, class dismissed. Right, Bill? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a part of the show that's dedicated and produced by teenagers. <laughs> How to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> Doofus! Geek! <laughs> These names hurt. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, how do you stop people from verbally belittling you? Well, if it's your parents, you gotta be tactful. If it's bullies, don't say things like, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Aww. Because they'll go right to the sticks and stones part, you know. <laughs> but if it's cool people, they're the toughest. Because what do you say to them? I mean, they'll call you like, hey, tool head. And then you say to them, There's nothing to say to them. There's no, there's no, nothing, right? So what I've done is I developed a list of nasty names to get true revenge of the nerds. <laughs> okay, get ready. Try some of these on for size next time you get belittled. How about Dreb? <laughs> or for the guy who's really into clothes, hey, fashionoid. <laughs> for the handsome man, klepto. <laughs> for the pretty girl. Plasty! <laughs> and here's just a group of random ones. These are just for fun. Niner, spoon mouth, goofball, whiz bang! <laughs> hey, lung can! <laughs> what you got there, Harold? Your family tree? <laughs> our funny home video stuff, so we thought I'd uh, visit our pal here, uh, Buzz Sherwood, because he's always laughing. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, yeah. How are you doing, Buzz? Pretty good, Red right. oh. <laughs> That's not funny. Oh. Hey, Harold, how are you? Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, is that thing on? Yeah. Really? Hey, yeah, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. I've been working on stuff. What's this? Wait, 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 wait. My grandmother did that in Vaudeville. <laughs> no, no, that's not, oh, no, I got no, an idea. I got no, an idea. No, here, no. here. What? You take this. Yeah. Smash it over my head really hard. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no, no, I know. No, 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 okay, no. I'll get no. a chair yeah. and I'll fall out of the chair. That'll no, be funny. That's, no, that's not funny. That's not funny. Uh, okay, okay. What else you got? Tools, tools. I can juggle tools. Watch it. No, no, Ready? No, huh? no, but, you got this on it? Ready to catch it? Buzz, buzz, buzz. buzz. Oh. Oh. <laughs> did, you, did you get that, Harold? <laughs> Buzz, Buzz. Uh, uh, is there maybe some kind of a cute little stunt or a trick or something you can do? A cute stunt? Yeah, something cute. Me like a loop the loop into into a into a hammerhead stall yeah. into an uncontrolled dive? Yeah, yeah, can you do that? Well, sure! That's what happened to my last plane, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I was gonna I was gonna take this up in the plane and drop it on old man Sedgwick, but I got a better idea. Yeah. Hold that. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it in the propeller! Oh, no, I, I don't think I want to do 
that, Buzz. Man, you're such a wussy. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me the water. Give it to me. Give me this. My plane! My plane, Brett! They're my plane! I got it! You getting this, Harold? This is great stuff. <laughs> well, there's even more good news and bad news about the uh, funniest home video contest. We won, didn't we? Yes, we won! I knew we win! I knew, I knew, I knew! I said we'd win and we won! I get to keep my job! <laughs> so, you tell me the good news. Tell me! <laughs> The good news is that the uh, television people down there took a look at our tape and have decided not to press charges. <laughs> Plus, they have promised uh, not to say anything to the authorities or the Humane Society. <laughs> we didn't win, did we? We didn't win. The bad news is that when the tape came back, old man Sedgwick took it out for processing. <laughs> So now we got no tape, we got nothing to sell, no way to raise money, and I guess we're not gonna have a show next week. Processing? He took it in for processing? What? You process film, you don't process videotape. I mean, any idiot knows that. Well, I know you do, Harold. <laughs> old man Sedgwick is not up to speed on these new fangled gizmos, you know, like the VCR or the wheel. <laughs> so now all we got is this old tape here, which is just all the mistakes and outtakes and screw-ups we did. Oh, what well, idea? Maybe we just put, like, credits on the front of it and on the back, and it could be next week's episode. <laughs> oh, Harold, maybe there is room for you around here, huh? <laughs> Anything to keep my job. <laughs> oh, meeting time. Yeah, uh, Harold, you take this and uh, set up the VCR. Oh, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> Boy, next week's show is gonna be a real hummer, isn't it? <laughs> Just my luck. He hurts himself. I don't have a camera. <laughs> anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, maybe we can dig up that old uh, film we've got of your dad. Remember when he went parasailing in that electrical storm? You know. <laughs> and, and if we can't find it, maybe we can just shoot a new one. I mean, he's back in the pink since the open heart surgery. <laughs> Tell him there'll be 500 bucks in it for him. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and uh, what's left of Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice. from the VCR, we're going to take a look at what will become next week's show. I can just direct your attention to really... Uh, 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 uh,